Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In the previous video, we explored different JSR223 Groovy custom code examples. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In this video, we will dive into real-time challenges and discuss various approaches or workarounds to tackle them effectively. So let's get started right away. So our first challenge, it is around capturing OTP or CAPTCHA. Here OTP means one-time password and CAPTCHA means completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. This is one of the commonly asked scenario based interview question. In the interview, the interview might ask us to explain the process of performance testing to capture the OTP or CAPTCHA flow in the application. Before we dive into the process of performance testing, let's take a moment to understand the fundamentals of OTP or CAPTCHA. OTPs are temporary single use codes that are generated and sent to the user through a secure channel such as SMS, email or mobile app. Captures present challenges or puzzles that are easy for humans to solve but difficult for automated programs to bypass. These are two security features to provide an additional layer of security to the application. They are used to enhance security and protect against various threats. They also ensure that interactions with web applications come from genuine human users. As you know, all our performance testing tools including JMeter will automate the real user workflow, right? Since OTP and CAPTCHA methods try to prevent the automated attacks, it will be difficult to handle the OTP or CAPTCHA in the performance test script. For that reason, we will work with development teams and follow different approaches to test the OTP or CAPTCHA workflow. So let's look at those approaches now. First one, passing the static code or text in the script. In order for this approach to work, developers may need to modify their code to accommodate this request so that we can pass the static code value in the place of actual OTP code in the request. Typically, two code changes may be necessary to support this approach. One, stopping the application to generate the new code every OTP request and second, accepting the static code and allow user to continue with the next steps. Here it is important to note that these changes are temporary and will not be deployed into production. So this approach is essentially bypassing certain functionality that may pose a low risk to the application. So it is essential to discuss this risk during the test plan review meeting and obtain necessary approval from the project or application team. Okay. In one of my projects, I worked with the development team and followed this approach. Here, we need to request the development team to share the generated OTP code as part of the response header so that we can correlate and capture the OTP code accordingly. Again, this is also a temporary change to support our testing and this will not be implemented in production. So we should call this out in our test plan review meeting. Another approach is to implement the code generation logic in the script itself. This is not an easy solution or approach and we need to evaluate the code implementation first using the performance testing tool like JMeter. Sometimes it may add additional overhead to the worker nodes or load generators capacity as the tool needs to execute the logic. In this approach, we are not making any code changes in the application. Okay. And the final approach is to disable the feature. If none of the approaches prove effective, it is necessary to discuss with the team regarding the possibility of disabling the feature. This is not a recommended approach because in this approach, we are completely bypassing the functionality. If there are any performance issues related to this functionality, they may go unnoticed in our testing, potentially impacting real application users in production. So before we implement this approach, we should highlight this risk and obtain the approval from the project team. Okay, now let's move on to the next challenge. Out of memory issues. Basically, this is not a challenge, but it is an issue. The reason for mentioning it as a challenge is that in one of my projects, the client has high workload requirements with a limited number of worker nodes. During our load test, we noticed that worker nodes were insufficient in terms of capacity to target the given workloads. Therefore, we encountered memory related issues midway through the test. Despite the identified need for additional capacity, the client faces budget constraints and is unwilling to invest in more resources. They have requested an alternate to approach to meet their requirements more efficiently. So to address this challenge, we have taken the following approaches. First, we executed a test in a single worker node or load generator to understand the maximum throughput it can achieve. Then we scaled down the workload accordingly. In our example, the given machines were only capable of targeting 50% of the workload. So instead of 100% peak load, we have executed only 50% of peak load and shared the metrics. So this will at least give a better understanding of the application performance with the tested workload. Okay. So to reproduce the out of memory issue, let's quickly do a 
test okay so i have already opened the jpet store demo application script using this we will try to reproduce the out of memory exception okay so in the thread group i have all the transaction that we were testing in the past and then i also have one summary report and then transactions per second graph and active threads over time graph okay so if you want to know what is the current heap memory configured in the system we can use one sample code to find out the details so i have already written that in one of the jsr 2 to 3 sampler let me enable this and let's disable rest everything we will run with one iteration okay so that we can see the output of the jvm arguments in the log so the code is very simple we are using one of the java package that is the management factory and then we are creating an object for that particular class and then we are trying to access the input arguments and storing them into arguments variable and then we are looping through that argument basically these are the jvm arguments okay so if i run this script and then open the log file we can see all those jvm arguments so in this arguments list the main important ones are this xms and then xmx xms is the minimum heap memory size and then xmx is the maximum heap memory size for our testing purpose i intentionally reduced it to 50 megabytes so that we can easily reproduce the out of memory exception so if you want to increase or update this heap memory in jmeter you need to open jmeter.sh if you are using linux or max or if you are using windows then you need to use the jmeter.bat file so for linux you need to use this command jvmax equal to and then you need to specify the minimum and maximum heap memory if you are using windows then you need to use this set command set heap equal to what is the minimum heap memory and then what is the maximum okay don't worry i will share these commands in the notes as well let's go back to jmeter and then what we will do is we will run a quick test by enabling all the J pet store demo transactions and also the listeners let's start with 20 users and then see if jmeter is able to handle this load with the current heap memory configuration run this script so if you go to transaction hours per second looks like there is no issue with 20 so it is successfully handling the 20 threads so let's increase the load and then see what will happen so instead of 20 let's put it as 100 and then rerun this script okay let's also open the log viewer in case if we see any out of memory exceptions so let's run this script so the moment i executed that script i think we got the out of memory exceptions because i'm not able to access anything in the jmeter so let's open the console and here we can see all out of memory errors so that means with the current heap memory configurations this application we cannot simulate 100 threads okay so that is why it is getting crashed and throwing the out of memory exceptions to address this issue we need to run multiple tests by optimizing the heap memory settings okay so let's move on to our next challenge. This is to capture email transfer code. In one of my projects, I have been asked to test the email transfer functionality. With this functionality, the application user can transfer money using the email address. There are two main business flows part of this email transfer functionality, send transfer and receive transfer. When a user initiates a money transfer using the send transfer functionality, an email containing a code and link is automatically sent to the user. The recipient can then access the funds by opening the email and utilizing the provided link. To enable this feature, the project team had a contract with a third party vendor. During the email transfer process, the application will trigger multiple API calls to the third party vendor. The vendor will validate the transaction and guide the recipient in depositing the funds into the designated bank. For our team, accessing the email and retrieving the code or link during the load test presents a challenging task. So, we have identified different approaches to address this challenge. As it is not possible to directly obtain the current transfer link or code from the email during the load test, we have created the necessary number of received transfers in advance. Throughout the transfer process, the application also stores the codes or links in the database. Hence, we worked with the DBA along with the developer to retrieve all those codes so that we can parameterize them and test the functionality accordingly. Furthermore, we collaborated with the service virtualization team to generate virtual responses for the third party API calls. This allowed us to eliminate any dependencies on the third party environment. So this virtualization helped us for conducting the isolated test to validate the application code. For isolated tests, what we did is we updated the API endpoint configurations to direct them to the server where the service is virtualized. Okay. Now let's move on to our next challenge. Value is not in the response. This is an interesting scripting challenge. During script enhancement, we noticed 
one value in the request url when we see that value the first thing came into our mind is that it might be a dynamic value right so we started looking for this value in the server response unfortunately it was not available so we have executed the script to see whether it fails at that particular request surprisingly it did not fail at that particular request point okay so after that we have started the script validation activities with various test users so the moment we tried with a different user the script started failing continuously and it is failing exactly where this particular value is available okay at this point we understood that this value is something related to the user because the moment we change the user id it started failing so we again closely reviewed the server response and noticed that the developer was converting the user id to ascii format using a function and passing that value in the request that means this value is a converted ascii text here ascii stands for american standard code for information interchange it is a character encoding standard that assigns numeric values to represent characters in the english alphabet digits and other symbols commonly used okay to address this challenge we have followed this approach first we have created a user defined function that will take a string as input then convert it to ascii and return the value back to the user we have called the user defined function before the request and replace the value with the newly converted value after this custom logic implementation our script started working with all the test users okay so now let's look at the ascii conversion sample code so i have added a jsr223 sampler to the thread group and inside the jsr223 sampler i have written the custom logic so first i have created a convert ascii value user defined function and it is expecting a parameter called name whoever is going to use this function they have to pass the name string so inside that first what i am doing is i am trying to find the length of the name because i need to convert each character into ascii value right that is the reason i need to know the length with this line i am getting the length first and then i have created a separate variable to store all the converted values and i am looping through this name in for loop and every time what i am doing is i am getting single character from that name variable and then storing that into a character variable and then i am doing the character to integer cast so if you want to convert a character to integer you can use this casting like you can write the int in front of that character variable which will convert the the value inside the character to an integer and that integer i am storing it into ascii and finally i am adding those ascii values into the converted variable once we loop through all the characters inside that name then finally we are returning that converted name back to the user request okay so here on line number 17 i have stored sample user id into a variable called name and then i am calling the function convert ascii value and passing that name value once i get the converted ascii value from this user defined function then i am storing that into the ascii value variable okay i am also printing here just to see the output okay let's run the script and then see what is the output of that ascii value let's clean up run the script here i can see the converted string as this so this is the value that i was getting in the request url if i change this sample user id to j meter and then clear the screen clear the script then i will get a different number and i'm also storing this into a variable so we can go to debug sampler and then see that value in the response data so now we can parameterize this value into our script okay now let's move on to our final challenge in some situations we may need to do date time conversions if the application and worker node or load generators are in different time zones and again in some cases we may need to work with different date time formats or sometimes we also need to work with file read and write operations for jmeter beginners these things may seems to be a challenging task that's why i have included it in the challenges to address all these miscellaneous challenges we need to write custom logic using jsr223 and groovy i have already covered them in the previous video if you haven't watched that video please go through that video to understand the custom logic implementation in jmeter i have tried to explain some of the challenges and if time permits we can discuss some more challenges in the future after completing the series so that's it for this video thank you so much for staying till then and supporting me i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions or want to share your experiences feel free to leave a comment below all the video notes have been uploaded in github and you can find the link in the description if you are new to our channel please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited i'll see you with the final video in this module until then take care stay safe and keep learning